He is a survivor of clergy sex abuse in the face of the movement to hold the Catholic Church accountable. And Joyce, you sat down with him and learned more about what motivates Peter Isley. You know, I did, Kathy. And like many victims of clergy sex abuse, Peter Isley says he never wanted people to know about his past. But something happened that compelled him to change his mind. Even now, Seeing that school on the hill That's such an idyllic setting. You takes 50-year-old Peter Isley back to when he was 13. You'd make that turn. You'd see the sign for St. Lawrence Seminary. Your heart would just go in your stomach because you're being brought back basically to your tormentor. Isley grew up 20 minutes away in this Fond du Lac home, one of eight kids. Their father died when Peter was a baby, so they were raised by their mother, a devout Catholic. My mother would say there is no greater calling than the priesthood. Isley agreed. He wanted to be a priest and would play mass at home. But in his first weeks at St. Lawrence, a boarding school, his faith was shattered. It happened when his modern history teacher, Father Gail Liefeld, called him into his office to privately quiz him. He says, uh, you know, Peter, um, what's the definition of nationalism? And you know, I'm nervous, but I, I, of course, being a good student, I give the exact definition. And then he leans forward, looks right at me, and he says, wrong. Isley says the priest then moved behind him. He began massaging my shoulders. That's how he'd always start, you know, sort of massaging your shoulders and um, asking about your family and this kind of stuff. And then he would move his hands down into, the, into your pants. I was just completely stunned. And then he'd pull them out, pulled his hands out, and just went on as if nothing was happening, dismissed me from the office. Isley says Liefeld sexually abused him at least 12 times. It was so disgusting, I hated every second of it. Each time, Isley told no one. He would bring up my mother, and he would say, you know, because she was so devout, this will kill her when she, if she ever finds out what you're doing. When Isley graduated in 1978, he took the secret with him, but he let it go in a big way in November of 1992. In the Milwaukee Journal that Sunday, then Archbishop Rembert Weekland had written a front page article about what was then an emerging problem, clergy sex abuse. I knew at that moment, that instant, that this is an opportunity to respond to this as a survivor. This will never come by again. This, uh, this, this moment is too priceless. So Isley wrote a response from a victim's perspective, which the paper published the next week. That's when, you know, victims started calling me from St. Lawrence and elsewhere. And that's when I began to realize the dimensions of all this. By now, Isley, a psychotherapist, had connected with other survivors nationwide to create SNAP, the survivor's network of those abused by priests. I've never sensed that bringing down the church is what they're about. It's resolution of what's troubling them. Uh, that I think is really significant. Now, Isley and Snap are pursuing a new approach, meeting with priests who have not abused children and who want to help. It's a chance really for both of us to understand the other person's perspective. They meet with no agenda, just to talk. Only good can come out of it, I think. This has always been about two things, clergy who assaulted children and bishops and church officials who covered it up. Back at St. Lawrence, Isley is surrounded by the past. Father Gail Liefeld died in June of 1994, just months after lawyers questioned him about abuse allegations. How many students did you have sexual contact with at St. Lawrence? Liefeld admitted to abusing seven students, but never Isley. Isley's mother is gone now, too. But before she died in 2007, he says she told him this. She said to me, uh, what you're doing has done more for the priesthood than if you had ever been a priest. A mother's pride in the call her son has answered. While Liefeld never admitted to abusing Isley, Liefeld's order of priests did offer Isley a monetary settlement. Now, Isley is married with a teenage son, and while he's a public figure, he wants his family to remain private. Well, the lawsuits that have come about because of the issue of clergy sex abuse have forced several church groups uh, into bankruptcy, actually, and, you know, including the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. What do they say about him? Well, we did ask them about that, and the spokeswoman said they appreciate what Peter Isley has done for victims. And quoting now, while we don't always agree with the tactics he uses, our goal is the same, to ensure that going forward, all children are kept safe from the crime of sexual abuse.